Um, I want to introduce Stevie Chilcote, and Stevie's a recent graduate of Central Michigan University. One second, we'll get up as soon as we introduce her. Um, and she is a Feed the Future Peace Corps volunteer in Tanzania. She's helping women and men build local capacity through agriculture and environmental work at the village level. And among other things, she's teaching new planning techniques and the use of organic fertilizers. Hi everybody, um, my name is Stephanie Chilcote, but you can call me Stevie. I am from Lansing, Michigan, but I'm currently serving in my second year as a Peace Corps, an Environment Peace Corps volunteer for Tanzania. Um, there we go. I live in the Mtwara region of Tanzania. It is the most southern you can get without being Peace Corps Mozambique. Uh, <laughs> We, we are known for our cashews, our lack of water, and a abundance of unpaved roads. But as a Feed the Future volunteer, I work very closely with local communities to improve their nutrition and food security. And in the interest of sustainability, I do everything with a counterpart. And my counterpart's name is Rigia Otmeri. I'm gonna call her my mama. She's been taking care of me since I showed up. <laughs> but she's an amazing woman. She is one of five kids. She put herself through college. She is the only one in her family to go to college. And she is currently supporting three kids, but I will let her introduce herself. Nice. <laughs> Wapile na soma sekondari na njota, watatu na soma chula msingi chikole. Kwa hiyo watoto wangu ni naishi nao, na udumazo wana zipata na msingi kupitia mwenye nafanya kazi ya kilimo. Uwa na muka asubui mapema sana, na anja chakula cha asubui, na wai kuenda shambani, mwanangu wanavurudi mchana, anakula chakula pamoja na baba yake, kwa hiyo unaendelea zibiru wa tukuru mungu kwa kwa yati. <laughs> Kwa hiyo ni mkulima tu wa kawaida ambayo nategemea kuzima cha mkono. Sina vitendo vya kazi. <laughs> e, alafu ni mtoto yatima ambaye sina wazazi. Mm. So she talks a lot about her son in that, but don't let her fool you. She works incredibly hard. She gets up at four o'clock every day to go to her farm. And this is actually a picture of her farm. This is Mbazi, it's pigeon peas. Uh, so she gets up at four o'clock in the morning, goes to this farm. She will stay there until two or three in the afternoon. And then because she's a woman, she then comes home, cooks the afternoon meal, does all of the dishes and the laundry, and she does it all by hand. And then she'll go out to another farm to get firewood. And then she comes back, cooks the evening meal, and by then it's 10 o'clock. So in addition to all of this work, she is also the agricultural extension officer for one of the local farmers groups, and she does that for free. And so we've worked very closely together, and one of the issues we discovered was education in farmers. When I first got there, I asked her what kind of work she did, and she said, I don't have a job, I'm a farmer. They don't view it as work. 80% of farming in Tanzania is subsistence farming. They are waiting around for careers. So no one goes to school. They farm like their grandparents did and their parents did. So we work together to develop farmer's field schools. And what these are are two to three hour seminars for about 15 to 20 participants. And the great thing about these is they're very low cost for the facilitator and the participants, which is very important because, at least in Mtwara, we depend very heavily on cashew crops. And for my mama, that is about $500 a year and she's putting a kid through college on that. The next best thing about these is they're very hands-on. Everyone leaves these having made an organic pesticide, having made an organic fertilizer. They know how to do this, and then they can go on and teach other people how to do this. And so the results we've seen from this are an increase in home gardening. This is actually my mama's garden up there in the picture. She has now planted eggplant and tomatoes and okra and lots of greens and all of this. She's taking control of her nutrition. Nanjota Village imports all of its tomatoes and onions and vegetables. And when the roads all wash out and the bridges all wash out in the rainy season like they did this year, we don't have any vegetables. 
So she's increased her nutrition. This is our main food right there. You can kind of see it, it's the white lumpy thing. It's called ugali. It's corn flour and water. So the nutrition comes from the sides. <laughs> Everybody knows it. So you can see the top one is, is okra and greens. And she's added protein there with the embazi and more greens. She's increased her nutrition, and a lot of this comes from her gardens and her farms. The okra, they just harvested from her farm, or from her garden to this year. But the biggest thing is the capacity building. This is now 15 to 20 people who can teach, who can educate others now about how to do these, how to use these techniques, how to implement this. And I'm only there for two years. As a Peace Corps volunteer, that's it. My mama will be there for the rest of her life. And she is now a resource for the 6,000 people of Nanjoka. And she's an amazing person, and she can definitely do this. She's pushed me since I've been there. She gets me up at 6 o'clock in the morning to go out to her farm to harvest mbazi or gugu or whatever, whatever the season is. <laughs> so it, it's been a really incredible experience for me. And I really appreciate you all letting me share her story with you. So, Karabuni Tanzania. <laughs>